All right, welcome day nine. Got a late start this morning. Only got four miles to the parking lot where I'm getting picked up. So, and it was cold last night. Man, uh, I got up and I was moving around for a little bit and checked the thermometer it said 33. So I don't know how cold it was last night, but it's chilly. So, Muskrat Creek Shelter, spent the night there. Um, we, you know, I didn't mention yesterday, <laughs> one of the big events of the day, we're in North Carolina, or I'm in North Carolina. So I passed that. Uh, but I don't think the forecast is very good for me. I'm uh, coming down here getting a sh uh, shuttle into Frankfurt. It's Good Friday and I'm trying to get my knee looked at. I had, uh, it's funny, everybody's trying to help me with some kind of tape or something, but my problem isn't a regular knee problem because I have, you know, new knees. But my new knees are nine years old. Well, they'll be nine this year. So, where I have the problem is kind of above the knee and below the knee. And that's concerning for me. And, you know, I knew I was taking a chance when I was trying to do the AT. But, like I told somebody yesterday, I didn't want to, I don't want to be on my deathbed somewhere or getting ready to die as an old man and think I never tried to do the AT. So I'm going to try to get the urgent care, make a decision probably later today or tomorrow and I'll get back with you. But uh, we're still plugging away so far. I mean, I got no problem on the flat and the uphill, but as soon as you come down, I feel that jolt in that part of the knee and it'll send a pretty good shot of pain up and um, it's been concerning here for a little bit. I'll tell you another thing. I uh, I was religiously taking Advil in the morning and the evening um, just to help with you know my feet or whatever. And I think I might have been having this issue a little bit before because I didn't take Advil yesterday. And that's when I really started feeling it. And I didn't take Advil last night. And I was up a lot of the night with throbbing in that that area that uh, is of concern. So just be careful if you're taking Advil just because or your ibuprofen or whatever. It might be masking uh, a pain that you need to know about, you know. So, all right, let's see how we do here today. Sun's come out. Should be a nice, easy day. Not a lot of uphill, not a lot of downhill, which I'm thankful for. And uh, we'll see what the day brings. That's pretty nice with the sun coming through this morning. Still cold, but it looks good. Always nice when you're walking. See a white blaze up ahead. <laughs> Sometimes you go a little bit without one. During those times, I mean, it's kind of the only trail. It just makes you feel good when you look ahead and you see it. You know you're on the right path. Well, good morning, North Carolina. Got an idea how cold it is. Got the icicles in the. <laughs> oh, it is chilly. Huh. It's almost 11 o'clock and still got the icicles. Now it is on the shade side of the mountain here, but 
still. And the temperature is 47 degrees. For those of you like me, the knee replacements, this is easy rocks right here, but you can see you're always turning, stepping, stepping down, which hurts. And guiding around the rocks. And these are nothing compared to what most are. So just gotta really take your time and watch your footing. But when you come down, you can try as much as you want to not oh you know, jolst your knee, but it's kind of difficult when you get in a rock field like this and they're all over. So I'm just kind of showing you this to get an idea. You know, you guys like me that think you yeah, have a knee replacement and, and it won't be that bad. It can be at times. There's times it's enjoyable and flat and all dirt, but not always. And I'd say 50-50, maybe a little less on the dirt side than the, than the rock side. So just keep that in mind. See here it gets dirt. Ah. And then it feels good. You know, walking like this, man, if the whole, you know, 2100 miles was like this, right here it'd be good I'd like that <laughs> and then when it's not dirt or rocks you got these roots that sometimes you can step right through and other times it just gets a little hairy to get around sometimes the whole trail is just roots that you're stepping over and your ankles are going right and left, knees going right and left. Craziness. Hey, an update on trail names. As I'm going down, steps that are out of OSHA regulation, I guarantee it. Um, so, Breeze, uh, Mr. Mayor, and uh, Mama Bear and Baby Bear the other night. I follow them on YouTube. And they camped right beside me and I was editing a, video, editing a video and I heard them talking. Somebody said, oh, Mama Bear. So I went out and talked to her a little bit. Interesting pair. They have a YouTube channel called uh, Wilder Wildflowers. Wildflowers. Yep. Look them up. Uh, his, her daughter is, I think, 11 or 12. And uh, she's carrying about 11 or 12 pounds, I think. And then uh, Mama Bear, and they're both from Florida. That's kind of what I picked up, just how their uh, their gear is and how they were training. But yeah, it's the latest names. <laughs> All right, here we are. My first hostel stay ever. It's at the Grove Hostel here in Franklin, North Carolina. They will pick you up at Winding Stair Gap, bring you out here, and. Uh, the place is great, newfound, and uh, no filter, run it. They have both uh, through hike. Uh, no filter's also done the PCT, and I think Newfound's planning on doing the uh, PCT next year. Great accommodations, really friendly people. Um, I gotta tell you, everybody in the AT community has been unbelievably friendly, helpful. Uh, it's quite the eye-opener for me, so but yeah Here's the hostel Well in the hostel <laughs> All right, everybody let's wrap up day nine here uh, it, It's kind of a crazy day, but uh, I started at muskrat creek shelter um only walked four miles to uh, Deep Gap. There's a campground there. There's also a parking lot there. And that's where I got picked up uh, to come to the hostel here, which is a great place. Um, 
So I started a muskrat shelter about 4,550 feet and deep gap, uh, or I'm sorry, Muskrat Creek was at 4,562 feet and deep gap was at 4,550 feet. So the total elevation up was 602 because it was a rolling a little bit, not too bad. Um, down was 830 feet, so definitely more down than up. Um, and that kind of helped me uh, make this final decision here, which I'll get into for in a minute. But uh, my blood sugar in the morning was 118. The blood sugar before lunch was 114. So, so my blood sugar is doing really good. Um, and and for those you keto folks that are following or low carb folks following, I have had issues with my appetite. I'm forcing myself to eat. I'm between. 20 to 35 grams of carbs a day because I, I use net uh, net carbs um, so not a whole lot every now and then you know with trail magic or something like the peanut butter with celery uh, you know it's not a sugar-free peanut butter or anything like that so that that kind of hurt would ri raise it sorry a little bit but nothing crazy you can do this energy wise I've not had an issue um, the issue is that you have to find keto friendly food or low carb friendly food out here on the trail and they're just not quite there um, I think they're getting there some of the trail angels you know like uh, uh, King Tut you know he had options for that but um, you know it was the celery and peanut butter and the pe peanut butter went sugar free and not, nothing on him at all um, so I will say if you're doing a low carb, well, uh, I'll get to that here in the end of um, what I'm calling uh, lessons learned, I guess. I'm, I'm writing that so I don't forget. Uh, so anyway, uh, so I jumped off trail yesterday, or I'm sorry, jumping off trail, and, uh, and mainly due to my knee. The pain in my knee is where the bone and the, uh, the joint uh, connect. So, um, what the, I don't know if they screw it in or if it's a rod in or what, but that is the where the the titanium joint uh, meets with your bone. That is the uh, the place that that is most susceptible to. Well, when when you need a new re knee replacement from that, it's because that area normally falls apart. It's not not the titanium joint that that's pretty strong. So. I had pain there and come uh, what we figured out is uh, I have some thinning of the bone there uh, through an MRI and it's it's significant in that if if I get a crack in that bone or something like that I can do another knee replacement I don't want to um, because this knee is supposed to last 20 years so they tell you not to run because it's all you know pounding on that that joint or where the two meet on the top and the bottom so uh, I what I found is the pounding going down the mountain uh, you know with a 30 pound ruck on is significant and no matter how hard I try with the trekking poles to limit that it was still going and I would get shooting pain up the side of my leg uh, burning around that area nothing good and so I really had to sit down and, and decide, um, you know, what, what's my options here uh, moving forward. And, you know, I'm 100 miles into the AT. Uh, to think that over 2,000 more miles, it's, uh, that, that joint is just going to get worse. If it cracks or breaks or I get infection there, infection being the worst, I could actually lose, you know, that part of the leg. Because once you get a bone infection, it's difficult. Um, so, uh, all that being said, um, I thought it in best interest at this point to, to just come off trail, uh, which is what I'm doing. Uh, you've seen that in the thumbnail. Um, if you have a knee replacement and you're thinking of doing this, I just, uh, first off, you, want, you might want to be honest with your orthopedic surgeon. With mine, uh, I told him I want to do some hiking. He probably thought I was walking around the local lake with, you know, with water in a pack. <laughs> so I wasn't altogether truthful with him. Uh, but 
in the end, uh, honestly, uh, I thought, you know, I'm, I don't want to be on my deathbed someday and think I never tried the AT. So I am very much with peace with this. Uh, you know, a couple people have reached out to me and said, are you good with your decision? And that last day, the last four miles down to Deep Gap, I struggled. Uh, went down to a knee at one point, the pain was so great, and I thought, it's, you know, I, I really want to do the AT, but I also want to be able to, you know, kneel down with my grandkids, and, uh, and I still want to ride bike and play golf and things like that, you know, as, as my life continues. And um, so I'm, I'm good with it. Uh, it. It's not really in my control. It's, it's what, it is what it is. Um, I am so fortunate to have been able to do 100 miles on the AT all the way through Georgia into North Carolina. I've met some great people. I've seen some views. If you don't hike up there, you won't see it. And, and I have so enjoyed the community out here on the AT. Um, I am at peace with this whole thing. Uh, couldn't be, I mean, I'd love to be able to keep going. I can't, um, but you know, it, it's, uh, it is what it is. Um, I will, I, I want it, for those of you on a low carb diet, trying this, I wanted, as we went forward, I was gonna really start listing kind of exactly what I was eating every day to see the carbs so it help you guys out. You know, everything I ate was shipped to me short of a couple of trail magic, uh, you know, celery with uh, peanut butter and coffee. Uh, that's about all I did there. But um, if you send boxes ahead, it's difficult uh, because now you're stuck to that schedule. You know, I had uh, hostels and, and resupply. You know, it's going to be 16 boxes till Harper's Ferry. And all of that food where it is keto or low carb compliant it uh, it puts you on a schedule and when it rains I think it's good for you not that I you know a lot of people that were out in the rain you know talking here they all had the same reason it's gonna rain on me sometime might as well get used to it so uh, and every one of them that stayed in the rain was like me what an idiot I was to stay out here because it's not walking in the rain that's the problem uh, it is setting up your tent in the rain and even you know the best laid plan uh, the water's still getting in there and then the next day your tents against the inside and your ground cloth and and so next thing you know uh, you know everything's wet and and that's where it becomes miserable um, so something to keep in mind uh, I think having the flexibility to stop when you need a zero day and not even with this uh you know coming up zero day i was thinking man this puts me off schedule a little bit so i was already going to jump ahead you know so i can get back on schedule and then provided i complete the whole thing to maine i come back and do that you know 20 mile section or whatever it it just puts a lot of pressure on you and and this should be more of a relaxing fun uh time and when i was out there walking in the woods of you know, I'm trying to make Muskrat Creek shelter, for instance, but if I don't, I can make that up, you know, I can do whatever. It's all good. Uh, everybody on the trail is just, you know, trying to enjoy the trail. And if if you're on the trail and you're just trying to get A to B, A to B, A to B, you're not, probably not really enjoying the trail. And there's so much to enjoy out there with other hikers and uh, just the, the trail names. So I got a couple more trail names, by the way. Uh, Muppet Mouth. Yogi, Sodif, and Mr. Tumnus. And Mr. Tumnus, I don't know what Tumnus is, but uh, evidently if you're younger, you probably do, and it's probably very fitting, because when he described Mr. Tumnus, I thought, yep, that looks like you. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so this will be the end of the channel. I did this channel just for the hike. Uh, I'm trying to think of different ways to, to do this, um, not necessarily hike the AT because I'm still coming down, you know, the rocks and, and it's still pounding, but I don't know if I'm going to do some kind of mountain bike packing, you know, where I have less or I don't know, but I will tell you this, the amount of people on the AT that are connected to the AT. You know, the shuttle driver's done two through hikes and comes down every year to do shuttle drives. The hostel owners have done uh, AT through hike, wanted to be part of the community. Stan the man 
has done a through hike and still wants to keep out in the community doing hikes along the way and help out and see more hiking. Now, the guys that I've met and girls that, oh, I hiked a couple years ago. I'm just out here to do 300 miles because, you know, got to keep hiking. It is amazing. And there's, there's a good story there to tell. Um, and maybe I'll be the one to tell it. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I, I want to thank everybody. You know, I checked last night. We've raised $950 towards Gold Star Sailing. This video that I'm making today won't come out for another week. So maybe I'll add, uh, you know, just a short with the final numbers of what we had. So there'll be about seven more days uh, for people to donate. But $950, man, for those Gold Star kids. I, I cannot thank you enough even for that. I mean, I know it's not the $5,000, but I've only hiked you know, 10, 10 days, and uh, God, I, I can't say thank you enough. And to everybody out there that was helping motivate me and, and push me, I, I do appreciate it, but also know that, uh, you know, this is significant with my knee replacement and uh, with the, uh, the thinning of the bone and me trying to push it, um, it it's just, you know, it, it wasn't gonna make it. So. So I've elected to jump off trail now and and figure out something else to do with my life to uh, fill this void that the AT community is definitely going to leave. So I want to thank everybody for following. Um, I hope you enjoyed the videos of me out there and at least you have a, somewhat of a plan for the first 100 miles. Uh, good points and bad points and you can go from there. So anyway thanks everybody i do appreciate again er everything everybody's done and said so all right everybody be safe and happy hiking